I play North Indian classical music and um, on the cello, and it's a modified cello to be able to play the music. So there's a lot of different techniques on the cello, um, which I've learned from Saskia Rao in Delhi, who's an cello, amazing cellist who has um, taught me to play North Indian classical music on the cello, which is quite a different instrument than usually gets, gets played on, but slowly it's being um, taken up more, I think. of Western classical training and in classical training singers yeah. are using one instrument. Yeah, I mean actually it's, it's, it's interesting, I actually found the, find the training quite similar. It, obviously the music is completely different yeah. but the dedication, the kind of um, long, you know, long practice hours, spending a lot of time with your teacher, really um, imbibing the music fully and all the um, nuances of it and I actually find the training it's one of the most similar things that, I mean, in India you have the guru system, so it's slightly different, but in Western classical music, it, similarly, you have such a uh, um, deep connection with your teacher as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it, in terms of the rigour of the training, there's similarities. Yes, I mean it's very different um, in Western classical music. Obviously, you read from a score, and that's how you've learned the music. Whereas in Indian classical music, you're learning orally. So when you're playing, you're drawing on what you've remembered about the raga and what you. I mean, it's, it, it becomes that you're not really remembering it. It's more that it's you kind of a part of you. You know, you have to really um, fully, fully imbibe it really to be able to improvise in that. But well, yeah, of course, Indian music, North Indian classical music, it's improvised. There's there's very very clear structures within it, but there's. Um, some improvisation within that, a lot of improvisation within that. Um, yeah. Whereas Western music, it's, it's, there isn't that. Um, because it's yeah. purely structured. Um, because it's because the notes are written. So you're reading the notes and yeah. uh, sort of playing precisely what's written, uh, yes. your interpretation of what's written. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just these are the very, very broad differences, but there's yeah. all sorts of other kinds of things, the tuning, intonation, are different. I think you said it was less structured or something, but I just I then said actually that it's as I'd say it's as rigorous as structured, just in a different way. It's structured about other other things, and the rag is the kind of you wouldn't ever go outside the rag, and the way that you're expressing it is really really important that you do it correctly. And so in the same way that Western classical music has really um, rules about it, Indian classical music has that. Well, so for people who don't know, what is the rag? <laughs> That's like, you could write books about it, I guess. Um, to kind of people familiar with Western classical music, it, you, people think of it as a scale, but it's not really, it's much more than that. It's, um, the way you go from one note to another, what are the important notes, the mood, the um, the whole, it's got, it's like a whole language unto itself, each raga, it's like a, a whole piece, um, and so you have to just express the kind of the spirit of it as accurately as you can, and, um, and well for me it's trying to do that as accurately as I can, of course people do do that very accurately, but yes. Yeah. 